This is Eternal Blade here for another 3D Paradise tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be creating a simple hydraulic piston. We're going to give it a quick UVW map, and we're going to take it into Photoshop and uh, using different layers and channels, um, opacity apps and whatnot, we're going to make it kind of rusty and look like a real, you know, weathered piston. Then we're going to bring it all back into Max, and I'm just going to show you how to render it out pretty quick. So uh, let's get started with the uh, basic piston design here. Let's start off by, let's see, give me some gray. J turns off those boxes, and F4 uh, shows the wireframe. Bring the uh, head segments down a bit. Mm, 18 looks pretty good for this. And move that like so. Press the W for the move key, shift and drag up. Right. Increase the radius a bit. Next, convert it to an editable poly. I just do that using a hotkey. Um, select the poly down at the bottom here. And you're going to want to inset it. And just so it's right outside of the other one. And then extrude right back up. Alright. Next. Um, we'll add a few simple rivets and whatnot to it. So turn on auto grid. Just make a cylinder right here. Click the align tool and align it in every direction except the Z. That should center it up. Bring the uh, sides down to about five. And let's see. Convert it to an editable poly as well. Select the inside, inset, all right, and just extrude it down a bit. Okay. And we'll just clean this up a bit by selecting this edge loop, giving it a small chamfer. Do the same on the top. Select the uh, top here, control click on the edge. Because Max doesn't loop on end pieces like this for some odd reason. And there we have a quick piston. Or a hydraulic piston, I guess. Goes up and down. Um, next, let's just add a <coughs> small connector piece. So just drag it out like that move it right back in, convert to an editable poly, and let's actually scale this down a bit. All right. Select these vertices here and bring them back. Select this um, top polygon and just kind of make a quick connector thing. Select this edge here. Loop. Chamfer. That looks pretty good. Control A to select everything. Just give it a gray material to start off with. And there we have our basic little piston thing with a place for a hydraulic hose to go somewhere else. And a nut shaped object on top. Uh, next let's give it a UVW map so <coughs> unwrap UVW and let's go to edit and just see what we have here. Sorry about that. So it looks pretty much like a mess which is to be expected. Um, Select face, press control A to select everything, mapping, unfold mapping. And hmm. let's try normal mapping. It's not bad. Alright, we're gonna go back to normal mapping here. I'm going to take this off the screen for a second and select all the poly 
polygons inside. There should be a grow button somewhere. Alright, well, I'll just manually do it. Because <coughs> there's no real point in texturing these inside ones. Um, as you're not going to be able to see them. Alright, now they're all selected. Just see if you can drag them out of the way. And they're connected, so the tools break, move them off. Next, we have to figure out where these things connect. So, select this. Seems like, yeah. Um, select all of these. Got a mapping, underfold mapping. That should give us a nice, um, you know, tiered thing almost. All right, so we can draw pretty easily on that. And a small trick that I've learned is when you have something like this where you need to texture at a specific point, um, just go back to your model and yes. Just make a small cut right where it is. You don't have to, but it sometimes makes the process a bit easier. Alright, go back to unwrap, and yeah. Um, face, control A, mapping, normal mapping. Actually, just mapping, unfold mapping. Select inside. Okay, tools break and bring it up. Next, select. edges. And then all these old chamfered ones as well. Next kind of mapping and flatten, I believe, will do it. No. Uh, normal. Nope. Uh, it's not working, but... in Break. Alright, we'll just manually position these then. So go to the vertex sub-object mode here. Make sure you're in the move tool and then just align these. It can be a bit tedious, but I see good results in the end. one of the things you have to watch out for when you're texturing this that you blend in um, the two sides because this is not going to be connected to the other piece we're going to be texturing which um, makes it a little difficult. Alright, next go to the other side. <coughs> 